Hi, my name is Scott Baird. I'll be giving a short tutorial on optimization. First, why do optimization? When people finish models, they seldom leave enough time for experimentation. That means they're leaving money on the table. In complex models, there may be many parameters, and the combination of the range of these parameters could create tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of experiments. I don't have time to be able to check all of the hundreds of thousands of possible permutations of a model. That's why I do optimization. For this basic tutorial, I've constructed a very simple model to show the steps. The same principles will apply to a complex model. For this model, arrivals occur every 15 minutes. The first step is 1 hour, the second step is 3 hours, the third step is 30 minutes. If you do some simple math in your head, you can calculate out that you'd need 6 worker 1s and 12 worker 2s. Let's pretend like we don't know what the answer is, and we're going to go ahead and do the steps necessary to optimize this model. Step number one, develop and validate your model. We want to make certain that the model is right. If you optimize a model that is improperly set up, you're going to get bad results very fast. So it's, it's important to make certain that you validate the model, you do the steps that you need to. Step number two is create scenario parameters for the elements that you want to change inside the model. This is done by going to the simulation menu and define scenarios. We're going to need two scenarios in this. We're going to adjust our model in such a way that we adjust the number of people to be able to get the maximum throughput through the system. So we're going to be adjusting worker 1 and worker 2. So I need two parameters, one for the quantity of worker 1s and one for the quantity of worker 2s. The first parameter will be labeled S worker 1. The default value will be used as a starting point for the simulation, so it's actually quite important. We'll go ahead and set this at 5, and pretending like we don't already know what the answer is. The second parameter will be called S worker 2 and we'll set its default value to 10. We'll go ahead and close that. Now we're going to place those scenario parameters where they'll be used inside the model. Think of these parameters as levers in your model that you're going to be adjusting up and down in the model. So what I want to do is use these parameters in a place that I can adjust inside the model. In the case of worker 1, I'll want to change the quantity field. Now I could type this in and replace the quantity that's there. Rather than do that though, I'm just going to hit the delete key, right mouse click in that field, go to the Keywords menu, and from Keywords I'm going to pull up S Worker 1. Now at the same time that I'm adjusting S Worker 1, I also want to adjust the capacity of the activities Process 1 and Process 3. If I adjust the number of people up, I need to adjust also their workstations at the same time. Now I could set these artificially high at the beginning, but there's good reason for being, a, being able to adjust these at the same time. You never make a mistake in adjusting one and not adjusting the other. You'll notice that once you've used one of these scenario parameters, I can simply do control V to use that parameter again or to paste it in. So control V, S worker one there. I'll do the same thing on process step number three. Now I need to do the same thing for worker two. In worker two, I'm going to replace the value that's in the quantity field. and I need to use that same parameter in the capacity where that worker will work. So I'm just going to use control V to paste it in. Step number three is run the model to create an image of what the output file will look like. You don't have to run this for very long. You could run it for as little as one second, but it just needs to create an image of what the output file looks like. You do need to collect statistics, but you don't have to see the results. Step number four is to run SimRunner. Go to the Tools menu and you'll notice halfway down is the SimRunner product. What it's doing is it's loading SimRunner and loading the output report so that it can make decisions with that information. The next step is to set up the target that SimRunner will use to find the best solution. To do that, go to the Define Objectives button. Under Performance Measures, you'll see that there are response categories. These are all the areas of the output report from Process Model. Once you select one of those areas, you'll see that there are statistics for that particular area. So for entities, there are these statistics. The goal that we're trying to achieve is to produce the maximum number of entities with the least quantity of resources. To do that, I can set, select Item Quantity Process. You'll notice that it goes down below. I'm going to maximize the quantity processed. If you've made any changes down below, you hit the Update field. The second thing that we want to do as part of our formula is to minimize the number of resources. So I select on the Response category, Resource. One of the response statistics that I want to use is Worker 1. That moves down below. In this case, I want to minimize the number of resources. I select Minimize, hit the Update button. The second 
response statistic that I'll want to use is the number of worker unit twos and I'll also want to minimize those. Step number six is set the range of the elements to be adjusted inside your model. Hit the define inputs button and we've got two things that we can adjust in this model. So we've got number of workers and number of worker twos. I'm going to double click on both of those because I want those to become the items that I'm using to adjust. We need to set a an upper and a lower bound for these areas. These are the things that can be changed. This is important because in many systems there are actually physical limitations on things that you can change inside the model. For example, if I had a piece of large equipment and I had limited space, it doesn't matter if I want to have more, I may be physically limited by the amount of room that I have on the layout. In this case, that won't be the situation, but I will want to set a reasonable range that the simulation can run through to be able to try its experiments. So let's set up a lower bound. Let's say that the lower bound is 4 and the upper bound is 8. Always hit the update button. You'll notice that it updates up above. Click on the next element that you want to change. We'll set the lower bound at 8 and the upper bound at... Now I've left these quite wide as far as the range. You'd probably tighten those down a little bit or you may run it for a little bit and see where the optimization starts to go and then start to tighten up those ranges. The next step is to optimize. There are a couple of possible things that you can do at this juncture. One is we could just go ahead and optimize the model. The other one is, is that we could analyze the model first. Analyze model helps you to determine how many replications to run and how long of a warm-up period to have. In this model there is no warm-up period and there's no variability in it so there's not going to be any need for replication. So we're just going to go ahead and go on to optimize the model. If you're doing this uh, separately and you hit analyze and you didn't want to go there, you still need to fill out all the information and analyze before it will allow you to go on to optimize the model even if you're not going to use it. In this case I'm going to step over that and go to optimize model. There are a number of optimization options that you can set up at this point. There's three different profiles that you can run, cautious, moderate, or aggressive. Cautious tries more combinations of elements, aggressive tries less combination of elements. For most models, moderate seems to work well. Convergence percentage, the lower this number, the more experiments that are going to be run to try and converge. The higher this number, the less it has to do in order. Uh, the general setting here is usually pretty good. You always want to have the animation disabled if you're running an optimization because now we're just running high speed types of experiments. If you had a model that had variability in it, you of course would want to run replications. In this case we don't have any variability in the model so we're not going to be running. Uh, same thing with warm up. If we need to have a warm up time we'd go ahead and specify that here or a change to the specified runtime. I'm going to go ahead and go to the, the next button and hit run. This has an evolutionary algorithm in it. This algorithm allows it to look at the results. When it does better on an experiment, it starts to build around that experiment. And when it does worse, it gets rid of those experiments and says, I don't have to experiment around those anymore. So it builds on the strong ones and the weak ones go away. Now, what does the information mean? The, the graph that it produced here, every time you see the red line goes up, that means our objective function is done better. The green line is the actual experiment and the value that it got from the objective function. And so you'll see that it tried an experiment, did better, it tried an experiment, did worse, and you can see so forth down the line. In a large convergence, what you'll see is that those two lines tend to grow closer together. This is a very simple model and didn't have the chance to do that many experiments. Let me go ahead and look at the, the output with you so that we've got an idea of where the information came for. You'll see that in experiment number 27, we actually did the best. That's the one at the top. It gave us an objective function of 124. How it arrived at that objective function is that we processed 142 items. We got 142 points for that. Did that with six workers and 12 worker twos. So you take 142 minus 18 gives us 124. That's how it arrived at the objective function. Now this model is very simple and the formula is extremely simple for it. It will become apparent if you're using weighting or targets in your optimization that the formula will become quite a bit more complex. What you're trying to do is maximize the objective function. In future videos we'll look at weighting and how weighting affects and why you'd use weighting in an optimization and how to use targets in your optimization. And as always, thanks for joining us for this tutorial.